maybe 15. <laughs> 5, 12 to 21. Come on. Let, let her read. You got the mic? Got to have a mic when you. Because they, they can't read you online. We got the, uh, some people in, in text. That, that the material, I mean, that a camera we got is, is, is the bomb, but it won't pick you up if you're not in a mic. Go ahead. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the One man, that's the man that uh, uh, Janet was talking about. And Israel like that one man. That one man, who? Adam. It took, uh, get that one. It took one man to get us in the shape that we want. Come on. So, so in other words, one man sin and that causes death to reign. Romans three twenty two, for we all have sinned. Notice the air, the average tense of that. That means when Adam sinned, all of us sinned. You're saying that's not fair, is it? Yes, it is. Because in Adam. And then those of you that think that's not fair, you would have did worse than Adam if it was on you. Adam, there's a lot of theological, uh, and I'm not going to bother you with that. I'm not going to bore you with it. There are two theological terms that talk about the headship and, and the cinnamon. In other words, we got Adam's sin that got put into us by transmitted from Adam either through cinnamon, you know, was like we get our DNA and everything else we get to it, or God counted to us as sin because he was a representative head. Let me represent this. It was both. He was a covenant. God had told him that he had made a covenant with him, and he broke it. And then it got into him, and it got into him through cinnamon so that his offspring ended up with the sin. You got it in you because of one man sin. So if you think that's not fair, we're gonna get we're gonna get you out of trouble after a while. Come on, come on, come on. For that all have sinned. Oh, oh, every last one of us. In other words, in Adam we all sin. And just just write this down because I don't want I, I'm a I'm a boy if I go to the Hebrews seven, the seventh chapter, Hebrew verse nine and ten. Show you how this imputation worked when Melchizedek paid tithes to Ab uh, um, Abraham paid uh, tithes to Melchizedek, and it represented, and uh, the Levites got credit for all the Levites got credit for. It. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. it you, you just worry about you, you, not how it got to you. Worry about what you do to get up. Let, let, come on, come on. In other words, it, sin had nothing to do with you disobeying the law. Death was here before the law. Sin, sin, sin was here because when you read the genealogy in the Genesis, the fifth chapter, it said, he, he, uh, boy, I wish I got that verse. Uh, somebody can find it before we leave. But if you don't find it before we leave, I want you to bring it back next Wednesday because I want to take time and do that. Uh, you know, you read those genealogies, and, and there's one interesting one in there. They say, he, w he was born, and he begot, and he got children, and he did, 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 talk about how many children they born. Then. then they got one of them guys that say he was born, and he died. All of them, think about it, all of them died. And boy, would that be if somebody, they put that on your obituary. <laughs> you were born, he died. And they put on obituary, sunrise and sunset. The sun went up, you came up, you born, and you died. Not, you ain't accomplished nothing. You ain't did nothing. You ain't served the Lord. You ain't got Christ in your life. You ain't come on now. I ain't talking about made no billion dollars. And I ain't talking about have a, a position. I'm talking about you haven't did nothing for the Lord in between that. You just were born and died. That's a sad commentary. It's bad. Come on. But anyway, so... Everybody died in that general cause. Why? Because Adam, death came. Death came because sin reigned. Okay? They
So you see how it got to us? Even though we didn't sin person, but sin is in, in we sin in Adam. Go ahead. And he, he was a, 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 a foreshadow of him. Foreshadow of who? Christ. He was a type of Christ. Come on, come on. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by grace. I, I like this. Get this. Stop focusing on the offense of one and the disobedient one. I want to get to this one. Come on. The, So in Adam, sin, we was condemned. But in Jesus dying for us, we was justified. Ain't that all right? Come on. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more than which received abundance of well, grace. You didn't get that. One word I want you to get in there, and I want you to go home. I'm going to challenge you to go home. I don't, I don't want to do it for you tonight. But write these verses down. I want you to write down how many times you see much more in there. When you compare to what Adam did, that ain't nothing but much more. Even the positive stuff, we and God got much more. Not, not, not more. It's the difference between much more and you notice that verse we read in Acts, the 20th chapter, verse 35, it say, it say, blessed he to give, but it is more bl blessed to give. You miss something on that. It's more blessed to give. I don't want to be blessed. I, I want to be more blessed. I don't want to be much. I want to be much more. Come on, come on. See, a much more me, I'm going to get abundance. My cup running, not my cup is full. My cup is not only going to bless me exceedingly, like that ain't enough, but after he give me exceedingly, he going to give me abundance. And then after he give me a bondage, he going to give me not more, but much more. Exceedingly abundant above all that you have. God is able, this is what, God is able not to give you more, but to give you much more. God is able not to give you exceedingly, but to give you. So what we got in Christ, I don't care what you accomplish. What you got in Christ is not only more and not only better, it is much more. And uh, not only he come to give you life, but I come to give you life and life much more abundant. See, in other words, he don't just, listen to me, y'all. He don't just come and raise you up from the dead, but he give you eternal life, more life, that's all right, not just a new life, but a better life, come on, thank, uh, come on Deacon, now somebody else ought to thank him, thank you for thanking me, because that's what I feel like doing, thanking him, come on. See, you, you don't mind one man now, right? See, it wasn't, didn't take a lot. It just took one man. There's one mediator between the man, God, and who that? That's the man, Christ Jesus. It took one person that loved us enough that was willing to go to a cross and die and stay in a grave for three days and rise on the third day. And because he lived, that's why I ain't worried about it, because he lived. I'm going to live also. And not only am I going to have life, but I'm going to have life much more. 
And it ain't going to start when I get to heaven. It starts right now. Because what I got in Christ is much more than I had before I got Christ. There ain't no joy that that beer that I used to drink could give me. I used to get something out of drinking that beer. Don't you lie. You got something out of that stuff you used to mess with. But what I get in Christ now is much more. I get a, a lot higher without hangovers. And with Christ, you don't get hangovers. You just get a lot of leftovers. That's what he did when he fed the past out. He had leftovers. Now, come on now. I don't care what you think you got out there that if you ain't got Christ, what I got is much more than what you got. Don't sell it for more. Get Christ and be much more. Come on. Come on, hurry up. Oh, Let me. How many righteous people we got over here? When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he, now he didn't put his sin in your life before you got Christ. But he also, you forget, you ain't did that right. And even the right that you do is that filthy rag. Now you, ain't, you complained about he made you sin because of one man. Okay, I give you that. Now that you got him, won't you rejoice and praise him that you are made righteous because of one man? That's what I'm focusing on. I ain't worried about whether it's fair for him to give me Adam's sin. And I, that, that besides the point, God knows that if I was Adam, I wouldn't even last long as Adam before I went and ate that fruit. I, I, it not, we don't care whether, it wasn't whether it was apple, orange, peach, or, uh, or whatever. It was that it was disobedient. It was that God told him not to do it. And I'd have did it too. The fruit wouldn't even got right before I'd been ate it. <laughs> you know how you feel? Come on now, come on. Come on. I, I'm, I'm going to let you go home because I'm going to let her finish. So you can understand this nature. And, and some of you have forgot about your young days. You remember when they used to fry chicken? Come on, Ellie. And you go in there and sneak in there, get you a drumstick or something. And by the time it was time to eat, that piece that you, they put on your plate, don't never tell you the good of that piece that you can <laughs> Come on. That's because that's in our nature, before Christ. And somebody will say, I, I'm saved and I still like chicken, but that's all, don't steal it. <laughs> Let, let's go. Come on. Come. Woo! Much, that was that minute. Yet I got saved, but because of God, and I, I was a treacherous dude, but because of God, when sin abound, that's why nobody can't get too low. Nobody can't get too. You can do the worst sin in the world where sin abounds, no matter how bad, how deep that sin is, how dark that sin is. God's grace, you see it rising. Sin is still going up. When sin increases, his grace overflows. Ain't that all right? You can't sin too much for God's grace not to cover it. There ain't nothing you did and nothing you can do that God's grace won't cover. Ain't no reason why nobody could die and go to hell because God got much more grace than no matter how much sin you got, his grace is much more. Ain't that all right? Ain't you glad, ain't you glad that? Thank God. Because, you know, both of us are some terrible people. At least I admit mine, you. Come on. <laughs> That's thank you, Lord. Everybody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for much more. 
And if you don't leave here with nothing else tonight, I want you to leave here that what we got in Christ is not more. It is much more. And I don't want nobody under the sound of my voice from this day forward to say, Devil, you're not going to let me to sell her for just more. Because if it's more, it ain't, it ain't I, I can do that in my own end. But for much more, I need something. That's why I like to, that's why I like to, I, I like that uh, J-Bass prayer. I, I just got to put that one in there. What did he say? Bless me? Let's read that. Let's read that. Because I'm going to let you go home. She's going to read the rest of the verses pretty quick. Come on, come on, come on. It kind of fit the much more syndrome. That's why I want to read it. Oh, come on. What, what verse are we? Uh, go ahead, read a few verses while she gets into it. Come on. In other words, they, they sin against me. They're going to name some sin. And I want you to, I, I want somebody to turn to 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Timothy, verses 3 to, to 7. And we're just going to read it. And I want you to come back. And you got two assignments up. I want you to read in, in, in this uh, Romans, the fifth chapter, verses uh, 12 to 21. I want, you to, I want you to count how many times much more is in there. You already did it? All right, you could be good for next Wednesday. This whole place. But it, when you count it, then tell me what that what that's message say to you. Overall, what message it give to you. And everybody's not going to have the same message. The message applies to us different way. Now, the, go, the, mess, the interpretation is only one interpretation, but there are many applications. Do you know that you can hear the word one time, same scripture, and in one state, the same person? This year, I may not identify with that scripture because my situation in life, now, so the scripture apply different at different stages in our life. And y'all got that? That's why the word of God is alive. It's dynamic. It applies in a lot of ways, in a lot of situations, even though it only has one meaning. You don't have to twist the meaning of God's word because it applies to you, to your situation. Because we read about Israel. We read about Hosea. We read about, but Hosea experience don't do us no good. It's not going to put no bread on my table. It's not going to keep my lights on. It's not going to get me closer to the Lord. I got to apply Hosea into my life. Y'all got that? So do that one and, 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 and do that one. Then I want you to read 2 Timothy, and you're going to save me some time. I'm going to get you out of here tonight because you promised to do that. 2 Timothy the thir third chapter, verse 1 through 7. Those, everybody got those two assignments? And you're going to save us a lot of time. I mean, actually, you're going to save about 15 minutes tonight. If you promise you're going to do that. Second uh, Timothy 3 to 7, 1 to 7. Tell her how it applied to the day and how it applied to Hosea. Okay? You're going to read Romans 5, 12 to 21. Put the how many much more that you count. P, we already count. But how did that apply? What message that send to you? What, how that apply to you? Both of them is how it applied to you. Okay? Yeah, go ahead. Listen, listen. You don't that fit the much more? I want you to bless me indeed. I don't just want no blessing. I want a, a big blessing. I want a much more blessing. I want an indeed blessing. Come on. And enlarge my In other words, enlarge my territory. Watch this, watch this. Uh, uh, in other words, give me more responsibility. The way you're going to give me a blessing indeed, I, I want you to take this basket and because I, I get my blessing, my blessing coming in here. So in order for me to get more blessing, I would make my basket bigger. Because I know you're going to open up the window of heaven, and I don't want no little container. 
give me at least a tub so somebody can hold one in. So enlarge my territory. Give me more opportunity. Come on. Oh, man, that, that's, now that's blessing. I want you to bless me so much that you got to keep your hands on me because I might get beside myself, but I, I, I don't want to get, I don't want to get out of your chain of blessing. I don't want to get out of, out of myself. I don't want to get beside myself, but I want enough blessing so I at least get it. I want to get it where you have to keep your hand on me. I want the blessing to be so, so big that you're going to have to keep your hands on me to keep me from. That's the more blessing. That's the more blessing. Let's go. Let's go. And that thou keep me from evil and that it may grieve me. And See what I say? Okay, that's what I put. I'm going to keep your hand on it. Boy, it's good to be blessed. That it is. I don't care. I want to be blessed. I don't want to. He had too many blessings that are going to keep me away from the Lord. But bless me try to get tempted when you have to keep your hand on me. That's a lot of blessing, boy. Now, that's the more blessing if there ain't none. Come on, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Come, y'all go now, this is where I want you to read Timothy. Even the, man, these priests, these priests was guilty of the thief and murder. You know why, how they was guilty? They wasn't preaching against it. Silence breed contempt. It's almost like the Republican. The reason why Trump got away with them because nobody talked against him. When you don't speak up about something, you got preaching in the pulpit, they don't speak up about it. They don't preach. They just advance. If you consent, God hold me accountable if I don't blow the home. If I'm a watchman in the military and you didn't sound when the enemy was coming, they, they put you, you got kicked out and you went to jail. So these priests were just as guests as them. They know they were hypocritical serving the Lord. They know they were serving the Lord. But they kept on letting the people think they was good when they were doing bad. Oh, boy, you don't see that in churches today. Come on. Come on, come on. In other words, cities that were once a refuge. You remember we read that in Jeremiah 22? Uh, the city that was, uh, that they, you had, they had uh, Sh Sh Shacham and, and, uh, and, uh, and Gilead was a place where if you accidentally killed some, somebody, you will go to there for refuge, but keep their family from taking revenge on it. And you stayed there until that priest died. In other words, there was supposed to be a city of refuge. Cities that, you, and look, boy, that don't match our city today. Cities that you wouldn't even think they were people. In the same city, years ago, I remember, boy, when I grew up, you, nobody locked no doors. I didn't change cities. You had screen though. You would sleep outside on, on a screen porch because it was too hot to sleep in the house. You were leaving and didn't even have to lock your door. Just try it now. You could try it with a lock door. <laughs> Same shit. Now, this city had changed. That's what sin do. That's when people hard not right. That was, they had became thieves, criminals, and the preachers know they were doing. As long as they were stealing from the neighbor and bringing the tithes to the church, they didn't care. When you see wrong and don't say nothing, you just as wrong as the one that you looking at. Come on. See that? By consent. Let's go. Verse 10. I have sent an in the house of Israel. There is a whore in the house of Israel. Okay, that, 
You're going you're gonna to read all of that in 2 Timothy 3, 7. That's how I'm getting you out here a little early. Well, at least I'm getting you out here on time. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so they became a stumbling block for Judah. Remember, don't forget this. Write these dates down. These are important historical dates in the biblical, uh, the, your biblical understanding of God. The North Kingdom got in captivity in 722 B.C. 722. You didn't wrote it down somewhere, but you can rewrite it. This is one that Israel, uh, that Hosea is talking to, the North Kingdom. The king of Judah's they didn't listen, and they went on, kept on doing what, what uh, Israel, Israel was doing. And they made an idea that some preachers had was bold enough to go ahead and preach what was right. Uh, so anyway, in 586, Angie uh, uh, reminded me, but I, I need to, 586 is the main date I want you to remember. The one, the captivity uh, in, of Babylon was in 586. It was confirmed in 586. It was in three stages, 605, 601, and it confirmated in fi 586. But the right main day I want you to remember is 586. And we're talking about 70 AD long, okay? Those are biblical and prophetic history that I'll bring back to you later on. Let's go. You do? Don't be nobody's stomach block, y'all. God treat stumbling block. He said in the 18th chapter of Matthew, it is better for to be a stumbling block for you to lead my little one astray. It is better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and jump into it. God don't take it lightly when you call somebody else to stumble. And somebody can stumble. People that you got to, uh, people, all of us got influence on some people. Family people, some it, it, it might be on your job. That somebody, everybody got somebody that respect them and their influence. And what you do or say can cause them to not to do or to do what they do. Don't be nobody's stumbling block. And they may not say nothing to you, but they may make a decision based on what they how they saw you. And everybody think that you're a Christian, and even on your job, they'll watch you, and they find out you're doing something late on, and they may think it all right. Man, they go to New Morning Star, and, uh, and they, she did this, he did this. Must be all right. You'd be surprised. If you're here tonight and don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, <laughs> we'd like to give you opportunity to be saved tonight. That's the main thing. Christ died. One man died on a cross, rose on the third day, as payment for your sin. And if you receive him as your personal Lord and Savior, you could be saved in life. You could be justified. You could move, you could move from death to life. That's what John 5 24 says. And then Romans 8 1 say, there's no more. We were condemned because of Adam's sin. But once we justify, Romans 8, 1 said, we, we are, there's no condemnation in those that receive Jesus Christ. We stand before God's right. All is as simple as ABC. Let's do that. Church. Tell them how to get saved and become a child of God. Okay, they're going to lead you in a prayer. And if this represents your desire, your heart, please remain standing. If you said this prayer for the first time in a minute, uh, please remain standing. We'll minister to you according. If you're online, remain standing until you call, text uh, uh, somebody and tell them 
that you became a child of God tonight. Go ahead. Nothing else, uh, yeah, yeah, I would guess, I, uh, that's, they was here Sunday. We all stand, and uh, all our guests just stand tonight. We just want to show some love, and <laughs> they all are, all are James. One thing about James and Derek, they are, when they, br they brought their children in the church, and you could tell that they were raised up. So we, we appreciate it. They didn't have to be here tonight. They just here for two weeks and they'd have been been here. You don't know how y'all blessed us. Got we end up we would had we got a crowd that we thought we just gonna have one or two. Y'all made our crowd. But you bless us with your presence. If we wasn't but one or two, you made it a blessing. This experience is different because you came here tonight. Thank you so much for giving us some of your time. Yeah, Yo, show them some love. We can do better than that. Uh, Rebecca back in the cellar, huh? Okay. So, uh, we're not, okay. Uh, Ed, don't forget, get with Joe. If you need any help, Deacon, Meek and I on standby. And I'm quite sure Derek don't mind too, but uh, just give us our call. We'll be here when you tell us to be here. Because you're probably going to need some help. Mo. You're going to have the stuff here. Friday evening. He don't have to get the trailer. He said, we're not going to have as much as we usually have. Jovetta say she's going to get it all on the van. Do we need to bring anything else out there? I got, they're going to get the horseshoes and stuff. So I guess what she can't get in the van, I just throw it on, they can just throw it on the back of my truck, too. Oh, no. The, we got, look, at, you look back there in that boot back there. <laughs> All that muscle back there. Then I got two more bo boys coming in, too. And uh, so, w so I can supervise them getting it on. <laughs> no, nah, we won't, but we appreciate it. Uh, just give us a call. Uh, in other words, the van ready? Yeah. When can I pick it up? Okay. Well, I'll come pick it up tomorrow because somebody I got to have a way home. For okay, we appreciate it. And I, this is something else. My wife mentioned this too. Uh, young lady, please stand. Our new member that came back home. Me, my wife. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. You don't know how much you inspired us. See, some people come back, they say, I'm rededicating my life. You don't see them no more. To the next time to rededicate their life. But she's been here for every service, every Bible study since then. And she's going to be there at the retreat. So uh, it, it just, if we just wanted to share, my wife and I would talk about it, how inspired. It just do my heart good to see some people that are real for the Lord. And anybody can moss the stuff, but your commitment is shown. So we appreciate your testimony. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we, we uh, you know, I can handle it. Just stay low. You got you can't keep your glow and stay, stay, stay woke. So get your glow back. Stay woke. <laughs> and, uh, and, and don't worry about it. People know me in Pinecrest and everybody. Is anybody here in Pinecrest? I promise you one thing. If I put you to sleep, I'll wake you up. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, 
nothing else. Uh, why are you looking at me like that? Uh, let, let, let our new lady close in prayer. Would that, would that, that's uncomfortable for you? You want me to, you want me to dedicate somebody else? Huh? You feel comfortable with that or you want me to dedicate somebody else? Okay, I appreciate it. You know, sometime I knew, Brittany, uh, you could do it for us tonight. Yes, Lord Jesus. Uh, chapter 6, don't forget it. You got to have it filled out by next Wednesday because uh, we're going to chapter 7. 